and welcome to PCR Highlights. I'm Chris Cook and I'm truly delighted to be joined here by the newly appointed, or one of the newly appointed course directors here at Europe PCR, Nicolas Dumental, and the old guard. <laughs> Steadily steering the ship of uh, PCR London Valve's long-term course director, uh, Bernard Prendergast. So here we are, gentlemen, the final day. We've made it. It's almost uh, time to relax, but we've got a few highlight discussions that we want to have before. I think also we want to perhaps reflect, actually, on 11,500 attendees here on site, all of the learning, the education, the networking. Um, but this meeting and discussion that we're having here is to find out what your personal highlights have been throughout that vast array of activities. So Nicola, perhaps coming to you first, you know, one minute you've been live case operating, the next minute you've been at a smart screen delivering teaching. So amongst all of those many, many things, can you tell us some of your personal highlights? I think the, the, the thing that comes first is probably the, the simulation program. Uh, it's an initiative that was initially conceived by uh, Francesco Maizano in the PCR courses globally. And uh, of course, it's part of Euro PCR program. And the idea behind that is that we would like uh, to apply the mantra never on a real patient for the first time. So it developed a program where uh, the people can come and just learn about the basic techniques in interventional cardiology see the senior uh, um, teaching them how to do them, and then they can train hands-on on simulators, computed simulators. So it's an activity, of course, that was key here in, the, uh, in the, this edition of Euro PCR, but there is a continuum uh, among PCR courses. It's really well developed also at PCR London Valve and over PCR courses. Yeah, it really elevates the learning to the next level, doesn't it? But we, we, we can't deny the impact of the more traditional learning sessions as well. So tell us any of your insights ab about those. Yeah, it, it's also one of my highlights of this uh, valvular program. Of, of course, it, it exists uh, um, um, in other areas, coronary field also. But the, the learning sessions, I, I would say, are really part of a DNA of PCR. It's made by and for the audience. You come, uh, you say that you're going to hear about a topic and then you share your experience with colleagues, with peers, uh, you share your, your complications, you share your difficulties, and after 90 minutes of such session, you come back home with a, a real augmented experience and a very important points that will improve your practice. Exactly. I mean, it's all about the learning and the education here, isn't it? Okay, thank you for that. And Bernard, any highlights for you? Well, it's worth remembering, Chris, that last year we were celebrating the 20-year anniversary of the first TAVI procedure, and there is therefore continued focus on the durability of the procedure. So it was very important for the VAL community to receive important data from the late-breaking trials, confirming the five-year durability of some of the newer generation of transcatheter valves, building on the data that we already have from the randomised trials with the established valves. So very positive and very uh, important messages regarding durability. Absolutely. I mean, it almost is a, cl a class effect now, isn't it? Absolutely. When we're speaking to our patients, we can be honest and open with the data. We know exactly what's happening with the majority of all the valves that are going in. Exactly. And, and of course, with that comes the reality of TAV in TAV procedures, a redo TAVI for valve degeneration, let's hope around 10 years or even later. So there were a number of sessions focusing on that question, reassuring data from the very early outcome studies, but also a lot of practical sessions focusing on what we need to think about, how we do the procedure, and perhaps most importantly of all, how we get the first TAVI procedure right, therefore creating the platform for the second procedure further in the lifetime journey of the patient. Absolutely, we've moved past the index procedure now and it's thinking about that that journey for the patient and I was really struck by the procedural success rates with complications less than one percent across yeah. the board. So extraordinary. Extraordinary, absolutely. Thank you. And, and Nicola, any, any other highlights from the, the programme or the content? Yeah, I, I would also highlight, I think, all what happened around the tricuspid, the tricuspid valve and the tricuspid topic. 
It's true that the, the field was opened by Tavi uh, 20 years ago, as, as Ben had mentioned. But um, the, the transcatheter treatment of tricuspid also uh, has, has been developed now for years. And uh, we saw during the Innovators Day that there is a strong investment, strong involvement of industry partners to try to find new solutions, new devices. And um, throughout the program, we were able to see um, a lot of information about how to use the existing devices to inform the community about what is going to come in terms of new devices. And also, and this is really satisfying to see how the science uh, advances also. We had in the late breaking trials, the Triluminate uh, data that were presented showing a significant improvement of the quality of life of the patient after reduction of a TR by edge to edge repair. So I think it really, really highlights how this field is moving and especially in the tricuspid side, how dynamic it is. Yeah, and I think the community has responded incredibly well to the patient need for tricuspid treatments. Um, and I, as a statement in general, the late breaking clinical trials in Valvula this year were spectacularly good. Okay, Bernard, perhaps a last comment to you in terms of another final highlight for you. Well, I think for me, it was the thrill of so many people being in Paris and the vibrancy and the energy <clears throat> that was around the Palais de Congrès this week, on, in the halls, on the escalators, the interactive case corners, the plenary rooms, there were queues to get into the sessions, there was no spare seats, and there was a palpable sense of community that was really very, very important. And as we all know, if you don't have the community, if you don't have the people, then these congresses mean nothing. So it was very much an affirmation of the importance of on-site, face-to-face uh, -face education, and of the positive PCR energy and spirit. Indeed, it, it really felt very, very dynamic this year, didn't it? Okay, well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your insights. And there you are. We've had a heart-to-heart -heart with our course directors here at EuroPCR and found out what really made them tick about the programme this year. Thank you very much for watching PCR Highlights.